Let's let's go ahead and jump into it. I want to welcome everybody back to the What If Podcast, where possibility begins. That's the mantra. Yeah. Back with my boy, Vic. Try Vic Jarvis. How y'all boys doing today? Doing good, good. Everything is lovely. Everything is lovely. Okay, okay. I'll tell you, man, well, we got a hot one today. Uh, I was strolling through, uh, like, what it was, Facebook? I was strolling through Facebook yesterday. And uh, it, was a, it was a girl on there. She said, uh... Anybody got any podcast suge- suggestions? Um, need new material or something like that. So I went through the, you know, somebody was like, check out nephew Tommy. So I was like, check out this, check out that. She was like, oh no, I already heard all that. I already heard all that. Then boom, she put, I'm looking for something to stimulate my thoughts. I said, I'll say no more. Yeah. You know, I had to go copy the link for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Go on, <laughs> check yeah, it out. Right. Like right, I did when I did. Yeah, man. So, uh, hey, to everybody out there, man, if you're trying to, Stimulate some thoughts, man. If you actually trying to listen to something that's gonna make you think, you know, uh, make you make you uh, analyze your own situation, really, you know, and, and really, really be honest with yourself and, and truthful, truthful with yourself um, in your own life, man. Hey, I think this is the place for you, man. I recommend, I recommend what we have going on any day of the week, man. I stand by the product, one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement on that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Hey, listen. Like I said, man, a hot one today, man. We're talking about black and America. All right? I think we all qualified to talk about this topic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man. Hey, ethos is important, man. Ethos being your credibility, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, man. I, I don't like my secretary telling me what my doctor should be telling me, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, like I said, man, we all, we all definitely qualified to, to discuss this topic, man. Um, of course, this conversation is it's black in America, right? It's going yeah. <laughs> it's going to have some adversity right. to it. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, I was thinking of one of my experiences, right? And uh, I was in high school, and I got an athletic director. My athletic director was Mark Sussman, mm. and uh, we were talking about racism. I don't really remember what the what the uh, the catalyst to the conversation was, but I remember him trying to make the comparison between being Jewish and being black. Mm-hmm. Right? So I let him pop. I let him. <laughs> I let him go on and explain his case. Right. And and you know what, man? On the surface, he had a real good case. You know what I mean? Talking about the Holocaust and how they had been persecuted and this, that, and the third. And I told him, man, hey, listen, man, it was all real good points, but. Or, however, when I look at you, I can't tell that you a Jew. I couldn't tell unless you told me. Matter of fact, your name is Mark Sussman. Your name don't even give it away. Like, you would have to be dressed a certain type of way or walking out of a certain neighborhood or, or, or something that would let me know that you were a Jew. And then I looked at him, I said, what color am I? That was checkmate. Like, <laughs> He ain't had nothing else to say, you know what I mean? Because yeah. while you are correct in that you have been persecuted um, in certain type of ways, uh, as far as how recognizable what, what you have been persecuted for is, is nowhere near as being black. Right. Just like being a woman, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's clear. You look at a boy, woman, that's what, that's what I'm about to discriminate against right there. That's, yeah. that's what I'm looking for right there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Maybe in a place like Germany, it was easier to tell Jews from, from others. But in America, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's a little different. You know what I mean? So uh, that's, my, that's, that's one of my viewpoints on being black in America. Very, uh, very easy target. Oh, yeah. Right. A very recognizable target. That's my perception on it, man. Um, I feel like a recognizable target. Mm-hmm. Hey, Jarvis. Black in America, man. Um, <clears throat> just your general views or your general thoughts on it. What's, what's your perspective on being black in America? Um, black in America, um, well, my perspective, man, it's, first it's hard, like, just growing up, like, just being told, like, you know, you already got two strikes against you, you know, you're a man, you're black, so you got to work harder for what you got. So, like, growing up, like, I never, like, like, paid it, like, I paid attention to it, but I never, like, got the grasp fully of it till I you know, got an adult, figure out, like, it's hard, like, 
being a black man, like, for example, like, <clears throat> like, seeing, like, the justice system, like, for example, a black man might do the same thing as a white man, but the black man might get sentenced more. Like, to me, I, I feel like it's just, like, crazy, like, I feel like everything should just be fair um, when it comes, like, the job searching, you know, it depends on, like, your college and your and your race, like, they look, they look on that, like, okay, this guy went to Harvard, so he, you know, he got, you know, credentials, like, he, you know, he might be seen upon better as, you know, a black person, so, like, oh, just just because you went to Harvard, that mean you white? No, I'm not saying, I'm I'm not saying, I'm just saying, I'm just giving, like, example, now, of course, like, you know, it's it's some black people go to Harvard, but, like, well, for the most part, you went to Harvard, the (laughs) the expectation is you have a lot of skin tone, yeah, so, uh, Man, I just feel like, man, it's just like, like you said, I feel like I'm a target, and it just feel like it's just like, it's all right, and it's like, I'm just, man. Okay. So, uh, your view on race or uh, being black in America is that uh, you are unjustly treated? Yeah, unjustly treated. Okay. What you got, Charles? Black in America. Black in America, man. For me, man, I would just say, I, it is, man, it's a challenge. Um, Like Java said, you know, that's a, that's one thing we heard a lot uh, growing up, that because we were black and also males, we already had two strikes against us. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said, I was told to us that, well, me personally, that was told to me a lot growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, just different, different situations I was in, different encounters I had. Like you said, I just, just being a target, man. And that's, it's, it's, it is unjust. It's not fair. Um, but, just because we cut our color of our skin, they they just target us. Like I can remember when uh, we used to. I used to always be out there in Laura Green, in Large Mart, in the Quaco area. Um, right, like fresh out of high school, man. Police would would, would mess with us every day. <laughs> Pull me over two, three, four times a day. Like like no lie. You know, just to search my car, bother me, like you know, what I'm saying, like, what y'all messing with me for? Right. You know, what I'm saying they tell, they 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 told me, man. Hey, anytime we see this car right here, we feel like stopping it. Hey, we gonna stop it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And there ain't nothing you can do about it. It's nothing I can do about <laughs> it, even though it's even it, it just got to the point where I was just like, man, I ain't even going around there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because you, you don't you don't feel like that. You don't even want to drive. Yeah. yeah. And and, it, and it's. It, it's just because of the color of my skin. Like, out of a week, them boys might have stopped me 25 times. Never got a ticket. Never was arrested. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, for what? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and and that was a big problem for me. Um, Even the first time, a, a, a long, 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 long time ago, the first time I actually really got in trouble, man, and got arrested, I just felt like that was, it was, man, that situation could have been handled different, man. I could have. Not had, not I, I just shouldn't have had to go through that situation. You know what I'm saying? And 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 because of my skin color, I feel like it, it made it worse. Because I mean, I actually, <laughs> it was actually a black officer there trying to, you know, help the situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you know, man, it, it ain't, it's it's barely nothing, man. Let's just go ahead and, you know, get them boys to take it and get, get them on their way. The officer, like, nope, they going in. They, we 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 arresting them, man. You know what I'm saying? We we I'm like. So so yeah, man. I, it's a challenge, um, but it's a challenge that can be overcame. Uh, it's not something that that um, we should let hinder us or slow us down from doing whatever it is that we want to do in life. And I think a lot of us do that, and we really should. So yeah, that's what I got. Didn't mean that. <laughs> Carry on so much, but yeah, man, you got a little passionate about that. Yeah, yes, it is. I tell you, it's it's a passionate conversation. I tell you, man, it's, it's something that hits at the very essence and being of who you are, yeah. you know, as a person. Yeah. Uh, and the fact is, uh, the truth of the matter is, everybody just want to be loved, man. Mm-hmm. I would say, out of all the commandments, the greatest of, of these is love. And if you love somebody, then you have fulfilled the whole law, right? Yeah. Um, so. To not be loved is a challenge, right? To not feel accepted is a challenge. <clears throat> um, of course, our podcast centers around thoughts, right. uh, certain paradigms, certain thought processes, and uh, how those processes 
affect your day to day operations, affect your your moment to moment actions. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was thinking of something just as far as thought processes in America. Um, and <laughs> crazy thing, this can be from the black community to the white community, but seemingly it's also from the white community to the black community that concept of fear, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I was thinking like when I'm driving. And I see a police officer, I automatically look at my speedometer because I want to make sure I'm not doing anything to get pulled over. Yeah. But then I thought about it. I said, I'm sure white people do that, too. You know, what I mean, I'm sure they check their speed, make sure, you know, it's just natural when you see a police officer, you kind of look at your speed. Yeah. But then I kind of thought down into it. I was like, am I really checking my speed? I'm going to cause it a speed. I came to the conclusion. Nah, I'm not really worried about the ticket. See, yeah. I feel like the white man wor- or the white person is worried about the ticket. Yeah. As black man, I'm worried about the interaction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm worried about the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. white person, like I said, you worried about the ticket. You kind of know how the situation going to play out for the most part. As a black man, I'm like, man, this guy could really go left. Mm-hmm. And then not only can it go left, like good just ain't good enough. Like, I could do everything right and it still go left. Mm-hmm. Like way left, like dead left. Mm. You know what I mean? And <sighs> that's a problem, dog. Yeah. That that fear is a problem. And see, the way I go to work, y'all know about Garden City Police. We ain't even got any. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a different breed of police. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, but Port Wentworth for this too. Oh yeah, Port Wentworth for this too. But Garden City has literally bought a road in Savannah, yeah. right? Like from 17 to where I work at, Dean Forest, that's technically Garden City, yeah. or some of it is, and then some of it is Savannah. So they bought that, they, they purchased that little stretch right there. Well, I'm staying at my mama's house now, and that stretch is how I get to work. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling you, dog, like in the morning, I set my speedometer. Like, <laughs> when I'm going to work in the morning, bro, I set my speedometer, bro, like, to try to avoid all interactions. Yeah. And that's crazy, man, that 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 fear could just permeate how you operate on such a level. Because I'd be real, fellas, and y'all can tell me, maybe y'all know, and hopefully we can help somebody else out. Like, bro, what you do when you get pulled over? Like, I don't even know what to do no more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I would like to, I would like to say at this point, if I were pulled over, bro, I would go ahead and take my license and my registration out my wallet, roll my window down, and put my hands with my license and registration in them outside the window. Yeah. I think that because I haven't been pulled over since I've been seeing folks get taken out left and right. Yeah. Right? I haven't been pulled over since. But it's crazy that I'm thinking like that. Like, mm-hmm. like, bro, what am I going to do if I get pulled over? Cause at first I was like, I'm gonna ride to a well lit area, but I quickly canceled that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's how my man get parked at the gas station. I was like, oh, that ain't gonna work. Yeah. You know, <laughs> throw that one out the window. Then I saw my man. Uh, I think that was Fidel Castro dude, and he was told the officer, you know, I do have a weapon. I'm going to get my license. I'm reaching for my license. He got towed up in front of his girl and his kids. So I'm like, well, that ain't going to work, you know? So, so the only thing I haven't seen anybody do yet is officer coming up, boom. I already got the hands out the window, uh, you know, got the license and whatnot. Yeah. That's scary, though, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's scary. And if Brad asked me to step out the car, I don't know what I'm going to do. Cause I'm gonna be like, bro, how, bro? Like, listen, I'm gonna put my hands on the ceiling, and you come in here, unbuckle my seatbelt, yeah. and then I step out, bro. Mm-hmm. What y'all think about that? Well, first and foremost, what y'all plan for if y'all get stopped by a police officer? What y'all gonna do? Yeah, man, I ain't gonna lie. I, don't, I, I, I think about that too, but I, I just, I wanna have everything ready, so ain't no reason when he at my window. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I, people know, a lot of people know I have my uh, license to carry, my my concealed, my, my permit. And um, I, I was talking with somebody before, and they was like, yeah, anytime I get pulled over, uh, another, not 
a white person. I was talking to a white person. They was like, yeah, anytime I get pulled over, the first thing I do is show them I can seal my, my permit. I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. Yeah. The, the let them, I mean, I, 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 this is how I feel. You, if you don't ask, I ain't going to tell you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to tell you I got a gun in here because that's, I feel like being black, that's going to make this whole situation worse. That's going to escalate the situation. Right. So, I'm, it, it's up. Ain't, the clip ain't in it. It's concealed. It's concealed. <laughs> Where it's supposed to be. And so I'm going to show you my driver's license and my registration. Right. No, if you don't ask for nothing else, that's all. I'm giving you what you asked for. And they like, why, why? Just You should go ahead and do it so there won't be no problems. That's going to cause a problem. They don't understand that. They don't understand that. Because yeah. they, don't, they don't have to deal with the stuff that we have to deal with. Right. I mean, I've seen people going as far as this age, hey, just going ahead and taping the license and the registration to the window. Not so much. You know Every day. Just yeah. have it out there. <laughs> just have it over there. <laughs> just in case. Yeah. Go ahead and laminate your copy and, and take and it to it, the window. And, it's, and it, it, it's even more crazier because a lot, a lot of people feel like this, so they already have that kind of tension and that when the police come. So it's, it's you know what I'm saying, it's already awkward. So it's it's just... Do the right thing. I mean, but Who? hey, yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> who's gonna do the right thing? Yeah, that, like, me or him or her or what? Because, like I said, man, for myself, I can say that it's fear on my end, but unfortunately, it's fear on the end of the officer too, because that officer has some kind of perception of Black America that I am just inherently dangerous or that I'm gonna do something off the wall. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. And, and at the same time, especially them pulling you over one, two o'clock in the morning. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? What? Oh, this, oh my God. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. You're already suspicious if you're out driving. But, 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 but right, he, they, they had that fear of me, but then I had that same fear of them that's causing me to cast my assumption on the police unit as a whole. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's, it, it is some good police officers. Your daddy, I mean, your granddaddy. I mean, how many years did he work for the force? Over 50. He was the oldest active officer in Savannah for a while, man. Mm-hmm. So, there are definitely good police officers. Granted, he was black, but nevertheless, there are good police officers. There are good white police officers. There are good black police officers. But it's just that element of fear, man. It's, it's, it's actually the fear that's causing me to act somewhat irrationally, right? Mm-hmm. Causing me to go ahead and say, listen, man, I'm going to go ahead and just put my license registration outside the window. Because this could actually be a good inaction. Also, in some cases, causing the opposite that irrationally. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, and that I just pulled over a black male. He got about 30 tattoos on him. You know what I mean? Car don't smell like nothing or nothing suspicious. I drive a 2018 Camry. Uh, Check and make sure it ain't stolen. Oh, man, listen. Man, I, <laughs> hey, man, it was one time. Drivers, I was actually coming to see you, man, when you went in Daytona. <laughs> I had a grand marquee on some 24s. Yeah. All right. Had the beat in there. It was a nice car, man. It had some nice tinted windows, but Florida don't have no tent limit. You yeah. know what I mean? I was in Duval County. Duval. Uh, yeah, I was in old Duval. <laughs> and uh, matter of fact, we're going to Duval tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm not driving. <laughs> um, but Zen Duval. <laughs> Just going to throw that out. There. I'm not driving. But uh, I got pulled over, right? And up until that day, I didn't even know my back seat came out my car. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I had a ninety-seven Grand Marquis. Man, they man, listen. I got pulled over by one officer. In a matter of five minutes, I saw officers coming out of the wood on four wheelers. Like there were all these K nine trucks pulling up from from all kind of places. It ended up being like nine, ten officers on the scene, like causing the scene, bro. Yeah. And when I say rip my car to pieces. Like, under the engine, you know what I'm saying, in the trunk, took all my bags out the trunk. It was, I think I came with one, two, it was probably six of us and two car loads. So, all took all the luggage out the cars, basically cleared out everything, bro. And, um, you know, when the officer asked me to search my car in the beginning, I told him no. He said it was going to call the K-9. I said, fine. But they always, you know, the K-9 always hit when you yeah, walk around your car, of course, no matter what. Of course, he detained me to the side for a while. Then, before he detained me in the car, but 
the K9 didn't bark or jump or anything. No, they just walked so, around and so, said, oh, yeah, he hit. We about to say. So I asked him, I said, I mean, I didn't see the K9 do nothing. What let you know he hit? This man said, when the K9 sits, that let me know that he hit. I said, bro, what? Like, <laughs> so anytime the dog sit down, that means the dog smell weed. It's like, nah, man. You know, but nevertheless, like you said, once you get pulled over, man, the, at, at that point, that officer is the law. Yeah. Like, forget what the law say. Mm-hmm. Like, at that point, my man is the law. And that 45 on his hip <laughs> further indicates that he is the law. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so my man put me, put me in the back of the car, I'm sitting in the back of the car, me, uh, one of my friends, and then a young female that was with us, watching him rip my car apart. And of course, the dog didn't hit on anything because there wasn't anything in the car to hit on. Yeah. I got a ticket for going, I want to say my ticket was 78 and a 70 on I-95. Like, <laughs> you're on the same speed as everybody. You're going to leave with something. Oh, man. I mean, just, Always like that. just blew my mind, man. Just that experience, I'm never going to forget that experience. And, man, listen, I ain't no angel. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here saying, but in that instance, I wasn't doing nothing, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, went, I, I wasn't doing anything. And, uh, and it's just those kind of en- en- encounters and interactions that I think build that fear on both sides, man. Mm-hmm. Um, Jarvis, you got anything you want to add to that? I don't think I came to you. <clears throat> nah, man, but, uh, yeah, like you're saying, man, just, uh, like, driving around, just, like, eliminate that fear. Like, it's, Kind of, I mean, not living in fear, but like it's hard, like just living in fear. Like I know, like getting pulled over. Like when I see police officers, like I make sure, make sure everything is correct. Like before I even pass them, make sure my seatbelt on, which it always is. Make sure I'm always doing the speed limit. And sometimes I put it on cruise control, you know. Like make sure I'm doing the speed limit. It's 45. I'm doing 45, 44. Yeah. Like, make sure. Let me get on 44. <laughs> but um. Yeah, man, it's, it's just kind of hard, man. I know, like, a couple instances, like, uh, growing up and, like, a couple months ago, um, I start off, like, growing up, um, I know, uh, Travis, you can remember this, man, uh, we was in high school, man, um, I think it's summertime, you know, uh, going to meet up with some girls, I ain't going get, to get in full detail, but, um, yeah, man, we was, uh, I think it was coming from Pula, or yeah. it was coming from whatever it was going to Port Woodworth. And, you know, at that time, you know, if anybody know me at that time, I was riding the 99 Nissan Quest. The van? The van, yeah. The green van. Yeah. The TV in the back. The TV in the back. <laughs> Diving in the back. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, man, like, um, we was riding down 95, of course, you know, going to Port Whitworth. And I remember at, I remember at that time I had a, a black, I had a black, a blackberry. It was black and it had, like, a silver. It was, like, silver in the middle. And I remember I was holding my phone at the time, my left hand, and we were just driving. And all of a sudden, you know, I seen the police behind me, so I'm like, well, no, you know, I'm doing the right thing, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to speed limit and everything. So I think nothing of it. So, you know, coming off Port Woodworth, we make that left, we come by the gas station. So all of a sudden, man, we see, what, like, six, seven more police cars come out of nowhere. So, I still ain't think nothing of it. You ain't think nothing of it. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I thought something was up, but. Like I said, I, I was doing the right thing, so, you know, I feel like they weren't coming after me. Yeah. So, so you know, I proceeded to turn, and I completely, I made that full turn, and all of a sudden, the light came on. So I'm like, shoot, who they going to get? <laughs> who they going to get, you know? Like, hey, they going to get up by these. Okay, they going to get out of the way. So, you know, I got in the far right lane, you know, got the way. So I see the cop got behind me. So, <laughs> now, my, you know, I'm young, you know, we're in high school, so, like, you know, uh, you know, try to just eliminate all interaction with police at that time, at that age, of course. Um, so, you know, call, we, you know, pulled over. So, I was just like, oh, well, my person, I seen a amount of car cars just like, just pulled in the parking lot. So, like, man, it was just like, like I said, like, that was like the most fearful day of my life. Like, kid you not, like, <laughs> 
I mean, Travis could attest to this. I'm just, I'm just replaying it in my head. Yeah, right? that was, that was, that was a scary moment, bro. Mm-hmm. To pull over in that parking lot, like before my man, before Jarvis even had the car in park, bro. I'm telling you, bro, it was about two folks already hopped out with guns pointing at us. For real? Yeah, yes. yes. That's how so, I said it all. <laughs> yes. so, uh, man, come on the loud, uh, loud uh, intercom. Uh, please step out the car. Oh man! Yeah. So, he, he, right, right there in front of that Wendy's, in front of the gas yeah. station, and all that, right so, there. So, um, yeah, and um, so I got out the car. I, 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 I hey, why well, how you got out the car? <laughs> Like, I, like, like, I kid you not, I count like at least like 10, 11 police cars. Like, that it was that many police cars. Like, I feel like the whole Princey came out. Like, for real. So, like, when I can't, like, when I, when my foot hit the pavement, I turn and I seen so many guns, guns drawn down on me. Like, my heart just stopped. Like, like, I just, Stop! Like I, I feel instantly like somebody already pulled the trigger. Like I feel like I couldn't think. Like, and it's just like crazy. So um, immediately it was like, let me see your hands. And at that time, I had my phone in, in my hand. So I want to thank Oh Lord! I want to thank him. I put my phone in my hand. So I immediately put my hands back up. You put your phone in your pocket? Yeah, I put my phone in my pocket. And you know, I just immediately went to thank him. So at that point, I was like, John, that's the wrong move. You know, yeah. you basically make a move. And so. Um, <clears throat> make a little story short. Well, so, I dropped that phone. So instantly, they was like, "Oh, do you have anything in the car? Do you have anything in the car?" And I mean, you can look at us, maybe young. So I'm like, "No, oh, man." But like, you know, us being black, you know, of course they have assumptions. And um, of course they searched the whole car. They ain't find nothing but a Bible. <laughs> oh, so they pull us over because they had a report that somebody was driving down 95 waving a gun in the car. Somebody? Yeah. Were they in an orange quest? I'm in a green quest? They said it was a green car. Somebody called 911. Oh, they said an old lady. What they say? Call report it said that it's a, it two black two black men in the car in, in the Nissan, me in the, in the green van, and he's riding down 95 with a gun in his left hand driving down 95. Oh, your phone? My phone. She assumed my phone was a gun. That's an amazing story right there, boy. So, I'm like, in my mind, like, why would you, like, first of all, what makes you assume that I'm riding down 95 with a gun just sitting in my hand? Like, so, like, I really think, and it's like, it's just crazy how people go out their way, like, to, to, like, Pretty much cause harm. Like nowadays, you see people like calling the police on like young black kids for no reason. Like um, the incident happened, I think earlier this month. I think it was New York. Um, the white lady in the store, a uh, store accused um the the black black the little black boy of touching her and raping her. And um, they went back on film and showed like evidence that the, the boy didn't even was like really near, like not even near her. 